Yeah, g'day guys. Uh, got another sort of uh, build slash uh, unboxing video uh, with the Mayday sale. I picked up something I had my eye on for a long time. This ASW28 uh, glider. Uh, two and a half meter wingspan, plastic fuselage, EPO wings. Uh, it's going to be a big one. Uh, doesn't look like there's a lot of work. Let's have a look at it. I've laid out all the parts in the box and I've grabbed out my receiver and I'm also going to put in one of uh, one of my return to home systems in it as well uh, just in case now, I think I might uh, try and try and do some FPV with the glider as well just pop it up in the front um, something something that I can take in and out uh, Primarily, it'll be just regular gliding. Uh, all right. I did initially think the tips here were plastic when I looked at them in the bag, but they are foam, painted nice and bright. Spare nose cone if you're not going to run the spinner. A couple of other bits for fitting. I'm not sure what they're all for just yet. Um, <coughs> and in tail, regular uh, suspects. It's nice they've actually included some fuel tube to put onto the the horns. That's a nice addition. Servos. Horns. Nice solid feeling piece of aluminium tube. Although the ends are a bit rough. Might have to run the file around that. <coughs> nice solid solid feeling fuselage if you've seen Ali Shanmao's uh, videos of the uh, these fuselage where he's hitting him up against the tree I have to reinforce that for a camera <clears throat> it's interesting Volantex branded ESC Lanyu branded box feels like a decent Decent sort of looking motor in there. Bit of Velcro for the for the battery. And wire wires running down the back. Pre-configured here. I am wondering how easy it is going to be to get the wing on and off. Uh, if that's going to be a big trouble getting it in and out of the car. But we'll see how that goes. <coughs> All right, let's uh, maybe have a look at the book and start the build. I'll uh, get back to you in a minute. So the first step they're calling for is to put the wing tips onto the wings, but I might actually leave that <clears throat> to the last minute. Uh, just so when I'm handling the wings, putting the control horns and connecting up servos and everything else, that uh, that they're not. Uh, going to get damaged by turning the wing upside down. The next step is the tail, so I might start there and see how that goes. All right, so first of all, the servo connections here—they're labelled quite quite well down the back on the servos coming out of the tail and also on the section. Channel 4 lead being quite a bit longer, that actually caused a bit of problem. It hasn't really worked out quite as I'd hoped. So we might just poke that in there first. And in fact, I've put the, the rod in there, but I might need to take that out to give that free that up a bit. So there's a tip. Don't put that in first. And Makes it a bit easier to feed in the two servos. Get 
does seem to protrude a little so what I might do is trim that down just a touch so that when that pulls up so when that pulls up it's going to sit flat and just not have a gap there And I think that's a better fit. Okay, before I screw it all together, <clears throat> I'm going to put the control horns in. I noticed the, the elevator there has them on both sides, but there's only a servo and a linkage will be required on one side. So I'll only put one horn in there. So here's something worth a note. In the bag of push rods and fuel tube and screws there are two different type of screws in the horns all the same length and size uh, and the thicker ones here are for attaching the two parts of the tail together and the thinner ones are going to be for the timber for the wings so there's the tail on. I haven't added the servo controls yet, the arms or the horns on there. It's a fairly easy access and I'll wait till I hook up the radio to make sure they're centered up before I attach anything. Alright, next step is the wings. First step for me here is I'm going to put the horns onto the control surfaces. But just feeling them on the other tail <clears throat> tail section, the underside was uh, a little bit recessed, which it is here. And I've noticed on the ailerons, now I think what it, I was about to trim it off, smooth it out. But because of all of the screws being the same length, uh, they've actually made the thickness here the same for each of the control surfaces. So that's good. You don't have to find the right screws for everything. But just be aware of that. That's not a bad mold. That's just to keep the thickness correct and the same size screws for everything. The horns on the wings now and I'm at the spar there. Not a big thing but it's it's got a bit of a rough edge, so we'll run a file around that just to smooth it up. And the other end as well. Now here's something I just I found interesting. This is the collection of uh, servo arms that come with uh, all of the gear. There's this really large uh, servo arm. It doesn't seem to fit any of the servos. Uh, we've got one's a push-pull. And four regular. So I guess I'll put the four regular on the ailerons and flaps. I was thinking about, I guess, cutting off one arm and it has the same length anyway. But I actually have a couple of spares. I guess once you're uh, modeling for a while, you end up with quite a few of these bits and pieces floating around. Uh, so I might just uh, put those off to one side and run those two for the tail feathers. I'm going to connect up the receiver now. Uh, I'm going to connect it directly up. I will be putting in my return to home, the uh, BGL. Um, just to center up all of these servos before I attach the arms. Okay, so here's a point. The uh, included fuel tube uh, has gone on okay on some of them, uh, 
but it's really just a little bit too small. So I have that on the aileron, uh, but the flap there, it is broken off. And uh, it just seems to split when, uh, when you try and get that on. Just a little bit too small, uh, but we'll throw some other stuff on there just to be sure. Okay guys, so I've got all of the servo centered up and the control surface is level and all of the horns on. And I've set up my transmitter, the trusty old Turnigy 9X, all the stock firmware. I am running the FreeSky module. And what I've done here with the flaps is because I'm gonna run the flight controller on the three position switch, I've actually got the, the flap set up on the pitch trim dial here on the front. And I have this the same setup on my Bix. Uh, so what that gives me is adjustable flaps on the dial. So full up should be level on the control surface. Halfway and then all the way. So here's something worth noting. There's a strip of timber to attach the wings together. And when that's sitting in the fuselage, there's actually two holes, one on either side. They're a little smaller. <coughs> and they, uh, they sit under the plastic. So although there's nothing mentioned in the book, I am assuming that there's, there's six screws here, two for each side. Uh, and I think that... Uh, Somehow, you need to line up the screw there to hold that in place so you don't lose that section. So just off the bench for a minute, and before I screw that uh, timber in, I want to dry fit the wings. Uh, the, the metal metal rod is actually quite a tight fit Let's connect those servos up having one of the servo leads here longer than the other one is actually a bit of a problem off the wing so I might have to perhaps tape that that pair okay it's a snug fit and then underneath okay there's one I'm definitely going to need to do something about that extra bit of servo lead. Yep. All in all, that's not too bad. Now four screws on the bottom. So already I'm thinking uh, I probably won't screw the, this wooden spar into the plane. Uh, it gives me a bit more flexibility actually getting the wings together and lined up. I think if it's if it's fixed into the plane, we'll see how that goes. I think initially I won't I won't bother once these wings are actually screwed together with four screws. They're not going to go anywhere. Uh, I might find though that having the wooden spar, maybe I'll just leave it attached to one wing. Let's see how that goes. And there's only two screws to fit at the field. And you know, incidentally, the the screws do line up relatively easy with the pre-drilled holes. So I don't think it's going to be an arduous task to get it all together on the on the field. Uh, it's only taken really a few minutes. And that's uh, that's it. 
that's not really going to go anywhere. Okay, so I hope, hope we can get that uh, the screen in shot there. I'm going to run up a power test uh, with the flight battery I intend to use. Uh, it's a Zippy 2240C. And fully charged. And at about 50%. It's pulling about 3.7 amps, producing 45 watts. About 75%, it's about 11 and a half amps. 134, that's some decent power. 100%, well under 20 amps, and 180, about 180 watts. Sorry, 100, yeah, 180 watts. So there you go. It'll be interesting to see how that performs in the climb. Uh, feels like it's got a fair bit of power. It's a big glider though.